Hi everyone, we're going to do a small video on how to wire up the Jammer 619 in one using a uh, Jammer harness which is six buttons per player, that's both for player one and player two using both the standard Jammer power supply and we're also going to be using the PC power supply so you get to see both options wiring it up. Right, let's get started. Okay, first of all we'll start off with the, the board, have a quick run through. Uh, we've got here audio out jack, which you can then connect to an amplifier. Uh, volume control, the next one is the connection for a standard PC Molex power, which is the same as the uh, hard drives you get in your PC or your CD-ROMs. Next up is the jammer edge connector, that goes to your loom. And we come around the reset button here so you can get in and change the options uh, dip switch here to change the resolution trackball input VGA monitor so that's a standard computer monitor or plasma LED TV if it's got that connection and lastly we've got USB for a PS2 uh, controller and we have standard jammer power supply Just let that zoom in for a second. Uh, the bottom three connections just go to your normal 240 volt plug. So on the end of that, it's just a normal plug that plugs into a socket. Uh, the bottom two are live and neutral. They can go either way around, doesn't matter. Next one up is your earth, which is FG. And then coming on to the other ones, we have plus five volt, which is the red wire on your jammer power, uh, jammer harness sorry next up you've got two grounds which will be the black wire uh, minus five volt which is green the loom you don't need it for this board and the last one at the top is the 12 volt and that's the yellow connector on your harness then we have a rather heavy PC power supply you don't need one like this this is a heavy duty one um, this is normal power supply that you find in the PC. Only difference being, when you plug this straight in, nothing will happen to it. It won't turn on. It normally relies on the motherboard for that to be switched on. So you have to do a slight modification to the connector that normally goes into the motherboard. If we go in here, you can see the green wire, which is obviously the green wire there. It's got a small bit of wire coming out, and it acts as a jumper, which then goes into the earth wire next to it, the ground wire next to it. Now if you want, if you're going to uh, use a power supply just for this, you can pull the wires out here at the bottom and then solder them together and put heat shrink over them and cover them over. Or if you don't want to do that, you just put a small bit of wire at the top like that and it just acts as a jumper. So when you turn that on, the PC power supply will turn on and you just turn it off from the plug socket. Alright, next up we have what most people find the most daunting that's the loom there's not really a lot to it when you break it down if we undo it like so the main two pieces are already separated for you this bunch here, with all the earth connections, that's your player one. And you'll have another one, which is identical, except it won't have the earth connections. And this lot is for player two. So you've got player one, player two, that there is over half the loom, just in those. Next up, we have the big thick wires, and these are what connect to the jammer power supply you have yellow which is your 12 volt red which is 5 volt and then your black which is your ground again you've got green there for minus 5 you don't need it for this bolt and then we have in with those lot orange and red those two are for your test and service buttons so if you want to get into the bolt and change any options Next lot, 
I've got this little lot here bunched together. You don't need any of them except for the two white ones. The two white ones there are the ones that connect to your speaker. And that is it, that's all you need. You don't need those because we're using a VGA monitor. So you don't need these ones, that's for an arcade monitor. Again, the only ones you need are the two that are bunched together. If you can see, they're already zip clipped all the way up. So you've got player two, and then this big bunch here with the ground wires is player one. Right, first up we'll connect it to a PC power supply. And this is literally a case of there's your Molex connector. Like I said, standard one you'd fit into a hard drive or a CD-ROM and that literally just plugs in. That's it. That's now powered. Now, word of warning, if you're using a PC power supply, just turn this over. When you plug your jammer loon into the board, like so, the wires that are intended for the jammer power supply, they will all become live. So if you can use a PC power supply, you can either just bend them over, put a nice bit of heat shrink over it, or cut the ends off, bend it over again, put heat shrink on, but these cannot be left exposed. If they are and they touch, obviously it's gonna short everything out. So you don't want that. So that's how easy it is to connect the PC power supply. It's literally just that, straight in, done. Again, don't forget to cover over the power wires, otherwise it'll all go pop. Next up, we'll do the jammer power supply. Again, I'll quickly go through the bottom. These just go to a normal plug. Normal everyday plug, that plugs in, that's it. Again, be careful because these are live, so don't put your fingers around them. Uh, Let's start off with the power wires from the loom. We've got 5 volt at the bottom, which is your red one. And obviously don't have this plugged in while you're doing this. You just screw that one into there. Like so. That's it. Next one up, black one. That's your ground. You can use either one of the grounds, it doesn't matter. Put that in. Again, just screw it in. Next up, minus five, which is the green, don't need it. So just bend that one out to the side. And then the top one, the last one is your 12 volt, which is the yellow wire. That's it, and that's done. That's your power connection. Now if we look on the, people do ask which way around it goes. If we look on the loom and the edge connector, you can see where it goes here, then there's a split, and these all connections here are the smaller ones. If you look at the loom itself, you can see the big three, uh, four, sorry, power wires. Those four go into these four. One, two, three, four. That's it. Just like that. He says. Not getting in at the right angle. That's it. There we go. That's it. That board will now power up as soon as you plug it in. Obviously we can't do anything yet because the next step is wiring up the joysticks and the buttons. Okay, next up, um, buttons and joystick time. If we look at a jammer wiring diagram, you can see all the colours there are explained for you. If we look on the right hand side where it says P1, that's obviously the player one side, and on the loom, player, player one side is the side with all the ground wires connected together like that and again the other player two side is the same 
but no ground wires. Like I said, they're already bunched up all the way down, zip clipped, so when you undo the loom, it all falls into separate sections. And then, if we start, I'm not going to do them all because we'll be here forever. Let's just start with, for instance, we'll start with the joystick, which is red. So you then find your red here. You then grab your joystick. And that's the base of a standard joystick. Find out which way is up. So obviously it's reversed if you're looking at it this way. So if you move the joystick up, so that'll be up, we're facing the other way. You can see inside at the bottom the micro switch is there. It's that one that's clicking. So you know this side is up. There's only two terminals on this joystick, so it doesn't matter which way around it goes. We'll put it on that one, like so. Just move the shroud up over it. And then have your ground wires here. Get one of those and connect it to the other side like so. So now that's made a connection and you click up, it'll be going up on the screen. And the next one up is down for orange. So we then get the orange wire and we click down the joystick. So, you then know it's the opposite one in that corner there. Again, we'll put the orange one on the bottom, like that. And then, if you undid the cable tie, this will then stream out. Again, another ground connection, and you just go all the way around each one until all the joystick's done. Let's just quickly unplug those for a minute. Exactly the same with the buttons. Here we have blue is player one, fire button one. So on the same loom, the same section of the loom rather, again you find the blue blue wire. Just attach it to either connection and again with one of the daisy chained ground connections plug it in like that that's it and you just do every button like that let's have a quick run through then so you've got the jammer board and this setup is using the jammer power supply and you can see the connection at the back going to the monitor is just a standard VGA monitor with a lead that can go to both plasma TVs, LED TVs, LCD, providing that the actual television itself has got the connection. So there's no need anymore to get hold of expensive arcade monitors. You can just use the standard stuff that's around now. And if we come over to the power supply, let's go through that again. The bottom three connections are the three connections that go to your 240 volt outlet indoors. The bottom two can go either way around, so it's live or neutral. And the third one is the earth from your plug. And then we have five volts on the power supply, which is the red wire from the loom. And on this power supply, we have two ground connections. Uh, that's the black wire. You don't need the minus five volt, uh, like I say, on this one. So you can bypass that and just put the wire away. And the top wire, which is the 12 volt, that is the yellow wire. And we've just briefly wired up one of the joysticks there you can see that the daisy chain ground wire going around and as I said it's the same for all connections and then lead that connection on to all the buttons and if we come on to the game itself you can see that just moving the joystick up and down then select three games and going right with the joystick we'll go ten at a time and then left go back ten at a time like that this is currently set to free play 
and as you can see there's a timer going down and once that reaches zero it will then go into the demo mode of whatever game is running and that's just a nice way of preventing burning on monitors one last thing a small dial on your jammer power supply that's to change the voltage output it should be no more than 5 volts so if you've got a multimeter run that from the ground connection uh, to the 5 volt and make sure that this is set to no more than 5 volts and that's it, that's all there is to it like I say the hardest bit that people find is the loom itself but it's all self explanatory when you've got the print out of the jammer you can see that it's literally it's just the colours are there, it's already laid out for you. And it's just a case of putting those onto the buttons, again onto the joystick, and the two white ones go to your speaker. If we look up here, there you go, there's the two white ones. Next one's down, you don't need those, that's for the arcade monitors. Test switch again, that's red and orange. If we go down, you can just see all the setup for both player one and player two for the joysticks and for the buttons. And that's it, nothing to it.